Greenhouse farming is no longer a foreign concept to Kenyan farmers. Many horticultural farmers have embraced greenhouses, but seeing as greenhouses are controlled environments, as a farmer, you need to get everything right to be able to reap from this investment. We visited Latia Resource Center in Isinya Kajado County, an agricultural training center, and talked to Joyfrey Nyandoro, a greenhouse specialist who work with Delphi. We came into Latia first as a, an implementing uh, uh, organization of a project that was uh, facilitated by SNV, which was uh, to promote a greenhouse uh, vegetable production in Kenya. Uh, in the first uh, like two years, we were involved as a consultant, so we are not here most of the time. But later, uh, because the project uh, was successful and uh, our company Delphi decided to be part of uh, this, uh, this company, and so we partnered with um, Latia Agribusiness a solution so that we could uh, be here full time and we could also use this facility as a training center, as a learning center and uh, we, 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 in that way we can also help more farmers to be able to, to learn from, uh, from us and be able to, to spread the knowledge we have already gathered in uh, uh, tomato greenhouse production. To kick us off, George took us through advantages of practicing tomato farming in a greenhouse as compared to tomato farming in an open field. The advantage of doing a greenhouse production of uh, vegetables and other crops is you can be able to control climate. You can be able to control uh, temperature. Temperature that the tomato requires ranges from uh, 15 to around 26, 27. So, uh, and uh, a tomato plant requires a different temperature depending on its stage of growth. So you can be able to, to adjust this in the greenhouse. So in short, it gives you a free hand to be able to do what can be of benefit to the crop you, you are growing. And also in terms of pest and disease control, you can be able to regulate temperature, your relative humidity to be able to control some diseases. Some diseases are very common, maybe with a particular climatic condition. Some pests also can be able to be controlled because it is within a controlled environment. It's very easy for, for control and also monitoring of pests and diseases. Most farmers are unaware of the specific types of tomatoes that can be grown in greenhouses. According to George, there are two types of tomatoes that can be grown in a greenhouse. These are the determinate and indeterminate. Determinate refers to those that have flowers and are harvested once, while indeterminate refers to those that continue flowering and can be harvested continuously over a long period of time. The tomatoes that we grow in the greenhouse are indeterminate ones because of the continuous production, the continuous flowering and the continuous fruit setting. The varieties are many, depending on companies. Like in this, uh, in this facility, we, so far we are doing uh, an F1 and Valuro. But there are, there are others, like Chonto, there is a Corazon, there is a Prosta, there are so many. And the ones in the open, they are like Roma, uh, VF, we have uh, Kaljay, Manimeka, there are so many. George insists it is advisable for farmers to get the right variety suitable for greenhouses as growing determinate varieties will be a waste of resources and time used in investing in a greenhouse. Farmers know that they, can, uh, they cannot buy a variety that's grown in the open and they come and grow it in the greenhouse because it cannot do well. You'll be wasting your, your, your money and time because the, the cost is involved in putting up a greenhouse and to grow a wrong variety, it's not really, cannot really add up. We started a tour of the facility by visiting the propagation area. As a specialist, George tells us it is important to take care of the propagation unit so as to have healthy plants once you transplant. The nursery is the most important part of propagation of uh, our tomatoes. That's why uh, we, we have enclosed it in this area. 
that's why we ensure that also we do monitoring of uh, pests using this uh, yellow traps and the horivas, the blue and uh, the yellow ones and also ensure that um, the area is generally clean because before before we we put anything here we need we clean the the structure we spray very well uh, with a strong uh, insecticide at the time of our visit tomatoes meant to be transplanted to one of their greenhouses known as greenhouse c were under preparation it is advisable for a farmer to propagate their seedlings in bigger pots so that they do not compete for nutrients we establish them in in uh, pots like this they are big compared to these small pots which normally are used by most farmers you can use this but in most cases when you when you use this because they are small and um, when the tomatoes grow they kind of um, are very close together and they don't have enough space for growing uh, into a bigger size so sometimes you can do this and then transfer them to a bigger a bigger pot like this or some farmers after this they, they, they leave them to, to, to compete and they just take them to the to the farm or to the greenhouse when they are not very very good. They use cockpit as a medium which is buffered first to ensure the nutrients are balanced. The cockpit needs to be treated first, you need to be buffered to get rid of uh, sodium and uh, too much potassium in the in the cocoa pit and we do this by buffering using calcium nitrate at uh, given concentrations so that we we balance the nutrients that are required to to make them once buffered the cockpit is used to fill in the pots where the seeds are sown one or two, three centimeters below the surface. And then we, we need to, to put the, the cocoa pit into these pots. And then we, now we sow our seeds. Seeds should not be sown so deep, like one or two centimeters from, from the top. So they can be able to germinate easily. Germination occurs seven to ten days after the seeds are sown. Once the seeds have germinated, they are fed with fertilizer solution that is diluted to lower the concentration. Normally, we feed using a standard greenhouse fertilizer solution or fertilizer feed, but we dilute it because these are very small plants. We dilute it to, instead of using 2.5 EC, we use like 0 0.6, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 something like that. So we continue increasing. Until the last week of, uh, before transplanting, we, we, we can uh, try now to use the, the actual greenhouse uh, feed so that we prepare them for the eventual greenhouse production. Plants in the propagation unit can also be attacked by pests and diseases. To counter this, the propagation unit should be protected by closing the doors all the time and keeping the area clean so as to ensure the plants that are eventually transplanted grow in the best condition. Even in the nursery, we, we, we also experience a few pests and diseases. In case the, the experience we can spray, but we also we always try as much as possible through this insect netting to ensuring the the environment is very, very good and uh, we ensure the opening and closing of the door is very strict so that we don't leave the door open unnecessarily so that we, we really ensure the crops are clean. George then takes us to the first greenhouse, which they refer to as Greenhouse B. The greenhouse has vents and the tomato plants are slightly over two months. The plants here are watered through a drip line. We call it Plasia. It is a... Uh, not very advanced, just in the middle. Uh, we do irrigation using uh, fertigation, so we provide fertilizer and water through the drip lines. Uh, the open, the, the vents up, up there, they are controlled. Uh, we open them uh, manually, as well as the side, the, the side curtains to control the climate in the greenhouse. 
before transplanting, it is important that you disinfect the greenhouse to ensure the environment is safe for the plants. You can spray a, a, a good uh, insecticide like imidacloprid or other good chemicals so that you can kill uh, pests and diseases, majorly pests that can be hiding in the crevices of the, of the greenhouse structure. But before that, you also need to make sure that the greenhouse is clean by, you can use uh, water under strong pressure, and high pressure to clean the, the papers, the, 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 the plastic and everything. Then after that, you make your, you ensure the, the, the beds are made well. It's important that you provide water like overnight when we want to transplant the next day so that when the crops come from the from the propagation unit or from the nursery they, they get a good environment to grow the plants are transplanted from the nurseries into the greenhouses transplanting is one of the most important steps as the plant survival depends on it the spacing we use is 40 by 60 40 centimeters between the crops and 60 centimeters between the rows and we prefer uh, doing the, 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 the planting uh, like in a zigzag mode. So uh, we, we don't plant the, the, the crops as in straight, in a straight line. The, the other row and uh, with this row, so we ensure that one is uh, ahead of the other so that we can provide enough space uh, for the, the crops. Instead of granular fertilizer, George attests to using fertilizer solution which is tested for conductivity of the soils that provide nutrients to the plants. He also adds it is advisable to use a lower electrical conductivity when the crops are young and to gradually increase as the plants grow to the recommended standard. This is the electric conductivity of, a, of, the, of the salts or the fertilizers that are in there. In the, in the mix or in the, the fertilizer mix we are using. So when the, the, when the EC is high, it means the fertilizer concentration is high. When it's low, it means it's slow. So when the crop is young, it does not need a lot of fertilizer. So the EC could be a bit low. Between uh, maybe from the nursery, EC could be like 0 0.5 to 0 0.78. Um, in the greenhouse, we have a standard EC of 2.5 we use. But uh, from the beginning, you can lower it a little bit as you continue increasing with time. We are taking a short break, but we'll be back with more.